What do all of these things have in common? For example, we want to maintain a liquid level in this tank. Or we want to be able to maintain a velocity of our vehicle. Uh, we also might need to maintain a certain concentration coming out of a reactor. An insulin-dependent uh, patient, such as a type 1 diabetic, might need to maintain a glucose concentration that's between certain limits. We also might have a, an Arduino device, an Internet of Things type device that needs to be able to control something autonomously without supervision from a user. So all of these things have in common that we have something that we want to try to control. And this course on process dynamics and control, we're going to teach uh, how, to, how to be able to control these uh, automatically with certain algorithms such as a PID or Proportional Integral Derivative Controller. One of the unique things about this course is that all of the examples are given in Python. Python is freely available uh, to download and is becoming more and more popular as a computing tool. Uh, let me go ahead and give you the course website and then I'll go into just a brief course overview of what we're going to be covering here. So come to apmonitor.com slash PDC. And this is the process dynamics and control course. So there's no need to register. Um, all of the information is here with all of the examples and assignments. There is a syllabus a schedule. There's some competencies, um, an info sheet if you'd like to share uh, your information with me, uh, and then also a, a video playlist. Okay, here's an overview of some of the assignments that we're going to be covering. We're going to be doing blending, uh, tank level, automobile velocity, liquid levels, tank reactor, blood glucose control, as I mentioned, temperature control of an Arduino device. Uh, we're going to get into some other things, uh, more advanced topics like state space and model predictive control, as well as distillation control and then some more advanced controller topics such as feed forward and cascade. Okay, the, the basic overview of the course is to first of all give an introduction to uh, modeling, how to simulate dynamic systems uh, with first order, second order. Uh, we'll cover briefly Laplace transforms, transfer functions, uh, state space, linearization, and simulation. Okay, we're also going to talk a little bit about equipment and design, and I'll show a quick overview, um, a flow chart of how all of this relates together. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to take measurements, uh, sensors and signals, and also valve design. Okay, part of the control design, controller design, we're going to talk about PID controllers, or as I mentioned, proportional integral derivative controllers. Uh, we'll cover some things about stability analysis, cascade control, and feed forward control, and then a section on optimal control. So linear programming, nonlinear programming, and then model predictive control with some applications such as refinery optimization. Okay, there's some related courses as well if you're interested in those. The links are there. Okay, so let me get back to uh, this. I want to uh, draw something here, which is a standard feedback control loop. And I'll talk about how all of this ties the whole course together. So we have perhaps a set point. So for the automobile velocity example, our set point was the output velocity. We want to maintain a, a car velocity at a certain uh, rate. Um, we're going to be manipulating, we're going to be changing the gas pedal in order to do that. And we want to design a computer algorithm that can do that for us. It's kind of like a cruise control example. Similarly, we have an, a target. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, maybe a range of, of values for our diabetic blood glucose uh, patient. And we're going to be manipulating, uh, we might be manipulating this insulin rate uh, that might be delivered through a pump to the patient. Um, actually, the insulin rate is right up here. I did a step test, okay? But we're going to be uh, manipulating that up and down in order to try to keep, uh, you know, this patient within the limits of uh, acceptable glucose levels. Okay, so that's, uh, that would be our set point, uh, automobile velocity or glucose level. Okay, we also have a process. 
Now in the case of the automobile, the process would be the dynamic equation that relates the gas pedal, and I'll put that as a U, and then our velocity, that'll be our Y. And we're going to measure this. Okay, I'll just take a measurement there, and we're going to compare that to our set point, and that's going to give us an error an error between our set point and our measured value. So let's say I'm too low on my velocity, I might need to increase my gas pedal. So if I'm too, um, my error is, uh, my set point is, is higher than my, um, is gonna be higher than my actual velocity, okay? Then my error is positive and it's, it's large, and so I would want my U value to increase my gas pedal value. So the way we do that is uh, we put in here a uh, PID controller, okay, and that's going to take our air value and then tell us what our manipulated variable or controller output uh, value should be. Now often we have in here as well, we have something called a final control element. Okay, so this is a signal um, that the PID controller might be giving uh, right here, and then, uh, then this is uh, what actually changes in the process. So final control element for many chemical engineering applications, that's going to be a valve, a pump, a switch, on, off, that kind of thing, something that actually makes a change in the process. Now one other thing that I uh, didn't mention here, I want to tie this all together again as well, is that we also are going to have measurements. Okay, so I'm going to put a block here. This would be our sensor. And for any feedback control system, we have to have three things. One is a sensor. We need to be able to measure what we're trying to control. The second thing um, that we need to have is an actuator. Okay, something that can actually make a change to the process. In that case, this is our final uh, control element and this is our measurement device and then the third thing that we need is a controller <clears throat> okay so that's going to be in this case our PID uh, controller okay so uh, how all of this relates then um, we have a, a course that first of all just focuses on dynamic modeling how do you come up with a good model of this process? So one of those is, uh, you know, for example, we can do a first order plus dead time. That's very common. If we need to get more complicated, we can do a second order plus dead time or a general nonlinear uh, model of differential, um, you know, ODE ordinary differential equations or differential algebraic equations. So we're going to talk about modeling a lot, how to come up with a representation of our process, and we can fit that in one of two ways, either from data, empirically, or from fundamental physics. So something like a uh, momentum balance, an energy balance, species balance, something like that, where we can derive the relationship between U and Y. We're also going to be talking about our final control element as well. And for the purpose of this class, we're going to spend a lot of time on valves. Okay, and, and a, um, so let me give uh, maybe three equations here. Um, one is going to be my process. Okay, so let me just do this. I'll do a process. Let's say we feel pretty good about using a first order plus dead time equation. And so that is uh, tau p dy dt equals negative y plus kpu of t minus theta p. Okay, so there's going to be, uh, there are going to be three parameters here. They're going to characterize this system, tau p the time constant, kp the gain, and then theta p the dead time. Okay, our uh, final control element is going to be characterized by a valve. Um, so final control element. And one of the equations that we're going to be using for this part of the course is, um, is going to be the valve equation. The flow rate through the valve is going to be equal to 
a CV value times a lift function times the square root of the pressure drop across the valve divided by the specific gravity of the fluid. Okay, so we're going to be spending some time with uh, this equation as well and how to implement that. Now, the final thing that I want to uh, relate here is our PID controller right here. Let me go and just write the equation for that. We'll get into this a lot more in this um, course. Our PID controller is going to be our output, uh, controller output, and I'll just put this as um, OP um, equals, we're going to have uh, output bias plus KC um, times our error between our set point and our measured value plus KC divided by tau I of the integral of the error plus, okay, then the derivative term, we'll actually implement this as KC tau D dy dt. So we're going to have, uh, you know, these four terms here. This is going to be our proportional, this is our integral, and this is our derivative term. So we'll teach you how to take a process model, such as these parameters, and then come up with the tuning parameters for a controller, Kc, tau i, and tau d. Okay, so this is at a very high level what we're going to be covering in this course. We're designing feedback control systems, and we're also trying to model processes. Um, you know, nonlinear, linear processes. Along the way, we're going to do a couple things such as uh, stability analysis. Okay, so stability analysis um, is going to be the range of KC values, okay, between an upper limit and a lower limit that lead to a stable system. So down here in our PID controller, we're going to have a certain limit of our KC that gives us acceptable uh, stabilizing results. Okay, we're also going to be covering a couple other things like, um, let's say I have a general model. Okay, we're going to have a couple other forms of this model as well, such as uh, you know, transfer function forms or state space. So for uh, more, more uh, sophisticated controllers, when those are needed, we're going to design uh, model predictive controllers. Okay, so we're going to use optimizers as well. Okay, so model predictive control is another area of application in this course. So let me go back to the course just one more time and just um, briefly review how all of this fits together. Okay, so we have, uh, you know, the assignments there, and those really reinforce some of the topics. But we have this uh, dynamic modeling. We're going to start with uh, just modeling our process, uh, first order, second order systems, uh, talk about transfer functions, balance equations. We're going to talk about the equipment design, such as valve sensors, and how to obtain those um, signals, and then the controller design, as I mentioned. Okay, let me uh, just give you a preview of some of the applications. Uh, for example, here is the temperature control. We're going to be working with an Arduino device, so we're collecting you know, real data, and there are some instructions here for those who would like to build this uh, themselves. Okay, and we have uh, all of the, the files in Python and instructions on how to install some of these uh, packages that are necessary. So we're going to be uh, controlling the temperature of this device by turning on or off a heater. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this overview of the course. I uh, look forward to um, interacting with you as well.